Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, I think with the game being very, very new, and a lot of people are thinking of coming into the game, um, I I think I want to share just, just my experience, my opinion as a player who's been playing since the first hour that the game has been out. Uh, keep in mind I'm completely free to play. I don't know anything about the pricing or anything like this. I am actually blocked out of the store because I use a US-based um, Google account, and that's actually not allowed, I think. Um, so I can't I can't actually buy anything. Like every time I click something, it doesn't actually list the prices. But I did log in with a Taiwan account before and to, to kind of check out the prices. Um, I think the this this thing was like, like about 30, 30 US dollars, which is like it was like nine hundred NT, which translates to about thirty US dollars. Um, and then and then the the stuff like obviously the the other stuff is gets more and more experience more expensive this cost like 20 something I can't, I can't remember exactly and this this pack costs like 90 uh, like 90 US dollars ish um, I don't think it's too bad like I've I've played a lot of these similar types of games like I've played Monster Super League I played Summoner's War um, and I kind of I kind of know what the prices are within those games like you know it's it's very very similar because with 10,000 diamonds you you get to summon about um, four times, no, three times, almost four times. Uh, with a bonus that it gives, you, you get to summon four times. You get a guaranteed, um, guaranteed four star or something like that, which a lot of other games give as well. Like if you look at this, the, the ticket it gives you a a guaranteed four star, which is like you can summon a four star or something like that. Just straight out summon a four star monster. Um, I'm not sure if it's like you straight out summon a four star monster because there's no, there's actually no four star monsters that are summonable in the game right now. Like if you if you look at the list of all the monsters, at most you get them three star. I think maybe like if you use it, you get to summon a four star version. Um, the game, the way that the game works right now is you can still you can raise your one star monsters all the way up to six stars um, if you really want to and they're not necessarily weaker than any like natural three star monster I think maybe natural three star monsters might have like more OP skills but in terms of just like stats and stuff um, you can still raise an, a natural like two star monster all the way up to all the way up to to max level and they're they're still gonna be um, very effective and and definitely usable um, I'm not sure exactly if they're going to be just as strong, or if they're going to be slightly weaker, but um, so far I haven't found any prob problems, because most of my units are 2 stars. Some of them are 2 stars that I've been able to raise to 3 stars. I've actually switched out one of my units. I, I used to use um, I used to use a different healer. It was the... It was the rabbit. Oh, it was, it was this rabbit. Um, I stopped using him ever since I got Olga for free. I just think that Olga has like the better skill set. That's that's the reason I switched her. Not in terms, of, not because of like stats or anything like that. I think in terms of stats, most units are pretty similar in the game. Um, so, which you know that kind of answers like you know for generally for prices. Um, I think it's pretty pretty decent like in most most of these types of games like the prices to summon usually like you get three or four summons um, and then yeah you get three or four summons and and you're guaranteed yeah you're, you're guaranteed to get a four star like a lot of other games have that as well um, like for Summoner's War or Monster Super League like for Summoner's War it's the legendary scroll for Monster Super League it's like the legendary egg which guarantees you that you get a four star if you buy like the most expensive pack, um, and then it gives you random like accessories like energy and and um, in in this case it's potions and exp potions. Um, so I think in terms of pricing, it's pretty similar to all other games. Like I don't think it's it's like it's like crazy expensive, but a lot of a, a big problem that people have been um, I guess. Um, people have been concerned about is the price for buying daggers like daggers are your main source of energy daggers basically means energy in this game um, and every single time that you buy daggers it starts at 100 100 diamonds it gets to 150 and the, th the second time the next time you buy it gets to 200 and then if you buy after that it gets to 300 and if you buy it again after that it becomes 500 and I have never bought anything over 500 so I don't know what 
what the next price is. I think it's 800. Like if I if my math is right. Um, but anyways, it it gets more expensive the more daggers that you buy. So it's not exactly a game where you can just consistently just keep farming nonstop. Um, but I've played I played games that are that are like this before as well. Um, I know a lot of people probably aren't used to it. Like this is. Most most Korean games, most Korean games probably don't use this system. I think a lot of the Korean games that I've played before <coughs> actually make it so that you're able to consistently farm non-stop. Like just, they give you energy through events, through random stuff, that as long as you don't use your, your like, your, um, your premium currency to, to do summons, then you will have enough to, um, to basically keep refreshing and keep playing the game non-stop. Um, but I've also played some games before where you, you kind of have to wait for the energy to regenerate and um, you know play from there and you can't you kind of can't use your 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 energy like to refresh too much but I think it's still definitely worth doing the first few times maybe until it gets to 500. So far I refresh to like um, when it get when it co starts costing like 300 or 400 and then I stop like once I see the 500 because uh, I think it's a little bit more expensive or a little bit too expensive at that point but there are other games like I I played it another game before called uh, Flower Knight Girl it's a it's actually a it's it's basically a hentai game or right? it's basically a hentai game but it's 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 like a Japanese game that is like browser based um, it's from like DMM if you guys know the company they make like those these these types of games but in Japan um, and a lot of their, their games actually you have to wait for energy like you can't you can't just refresh and constantly farm over and over again you have to wait for the energy to regenerate and then you continue farming I think in Lineage Red Knights the energy regeneration is pretty is pretty decent like it you're, if you're you basically kinda it forces you to log on like maybe um, three times a day at the very least to to use your energy and farm um, it's not a game where you can just constantly put your units into a certain map and just farm over and over and over again. Um, another reason for that is because the way that progression is designed in this game. There are multiple ways to to raise your units, and for for trans like the main way I think is to aim for transmute. This is the most uh, this is the easiest way to raise the overall power level of your units and you need to go to specific maps to farm certain materials to make make your units stronger and you can't you can't just park your units in one map and farm over and over again you kind of kind of have to switch it around and farm until you have enough of a certain type of materials and then move on to a next map and then farm farm that map so it's not a game where you can just afk farm for the entire day um i'd imagine if you want to write a script for this game it'd be pretty difficult because you you wouldn't even know what the next material is that you want want to farm so it's not a game that really can be automated so it's kind of a game I mean the the combat in the game is actually automated but choosing how to progress and how to level um, you know there's a lot there's a pretty big um, player aspect to that you have to you have to actively make decisions and stuff uh, for your for your team so yeah, I think I think from my perspective, as someone who has been playing since the first day, I'm level 27. Um, this is I think pretty decent. In in the arena, I'm top 400. So well, you know, I, I didn't do any arena today, but once I do, I probably will increase my rank um, down down to the you know within the top 400. And I don't think that's like that impressive, but there's already quite a lot of people playing. Um, and there's also like I, I think I'm one of the highest levels in my guild. Like a lot of my other guildies, only the the guild leader and his alt is level 29. Um, most of the other players are, are around my level or lower level than me. So I think I'm the l highest level player besides my guild leader in the game. And I think he's pretty hardcore. Like he plays this game nonstop. Also, you know he's the, he's the leader and he. Uh, <laughs> He he gets he probably is not free to play. Um, so yeah, there's there's that as well. So in conclusion, in conclusion, I I really don't think it's a game that's like pay to win. I think it's a game that requires you to have no life and just um, 
you know, you can't miss a single day. You don't have to be constantly farming, but you cannot miss anything, like, at all. Like, if you have to be basically on, on every single day, and it's very, very hard for you to catch up if you, uh, if you started playing late, I think. It's a game kind of like that. Like, I think the only way that players are able to catch up on this game is if they, if they, uh, if they spend a shit ton of money to catch up. I mean, obviously you could spend a shit ton of money and catch up to where I am right now. But as a free-to-play player, I think like you just need to start early and never ever miss a single day, and you'll be pretty good. Because, um, you know, I think I'm doing fine so far, and I haven't spent a single penny. So we'll see. We'll see in a month. We'll see what happens um, to, to how the game progresses. But I think if I just play every single day, just like never miss out on anything. Make sure to use use up my en energy at all times. Uh, make sure to use up my my refreshes all the way up to 500 and make sure to use my like complete all my quests every single day do all my daily everything like use my tickets for the tower of insolence uh do every single battle that i need to every single day um then i should be able to just keep up with with all the other top players giving that they don't spend like you know they don't go full whale mode and spend like 20k on this game uh <laughs> just in the beginning but yeah that's pretty much it so Hopefully this gave, gave you guys some insights on the game, and how, just it's just my opinions. Like it's not uh, it's not it's not the truth or anything. And I guess my opinions are somewhat limited because I've only been playing the game for a few days because it's only been out for a few days. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.